Who is the Olympic athlete? Who is the Olympic athlete? Louis Sylvie Zapparini. Ever heard of this American World War II veteran and Olympic distant runner? His story is without a doubt one of the most inspirational ones I've ever heard. Join us on our latest Cinefile episode to find out why, and be sure to visit our Funday website for more. Do today learn, today is Tuesday. Commercial. Popular. I have to wait for Klee. So he or she is at the Columbia Towers Hotel gift store. So he is at the Columbia Towers Hotel gift store. So he is at the Columbia Towers Hotel gift store. So he is at the Columbia Towers Hotel gift store. So he is at the Columbia Towers Hotel gift store. So he is at the Columbia Towers Hotel gift store. So he is at the Columbia Towers Produced and directed by Angelina Jolie, this film stars Jack O'Connell as American Olympian and Army officer Louis Zapparini, and Miyavi as Imperial Japanese Army Corporal Motohiro Watanabe. The story follows Zapparini's journey from childhood to surviving in a raft for 47 days after his bomber ditched in the ocean during the Second World War, but later being captured by the Japanese and sent to a series of prison of war camps. Attracted unwanted attention from a corporal they nicknamed the Bird. You got it, Sam. Roger. You hit this one. Drinks are on me. I ain't going to a bar with you, handsome. You confuse all the broads. <laughs> Get your cameras, boys. I'm gonna light it up like Christmas. During an April 1943 bombing mission against the Japanese-held island of Nauru, Louis Zapparini is flying as a bombardier of the United States Army Air Force B-24 Liberator when his plane is damaged in combat and a number of the crew injured. The pilot manages to bring the aircraft to a stop at the end of the runway despite an exploded tire. In a flashback to his earlier youth as an Italian-American boy in Torrance, California, Louis misbehaves by stealing, drinking liquor, and smoking. He is often picked on by others for his Italian ethnicity. His brother Peter, seeing how fast Louis runs, encourages and trains him to be a runner. If you can take it, you can make it. All right, you train, you fight way harder than those other guys, and you win. You get out from under them, or you keep going the way you're going, and you end up as a bum in the streets. Louis makes the track team, and over time, he becomes a disciplined distance runner, earning the nickname the Torrance Tornado. At the 1936 Summer Olympics, Louis finishes eighth and sets a record in the final lap for the 5,000-meter race. Returning to his 1943 combat service, Louis leaves with some of the surviving crew and several replacements on a search and rescue mission with an old plane. One engine fails, and the aircraft ultimately crashes into the ocean. Louis survives alongside two others, Phil and Mac, floating on two inflatable rafts. After numerous days, they use up all their food supplies. And a few days later, they encounter a storm. Out of desperation, Louis prays. If you get me through this, if you answer my prayers, I swear I'll dedicate my whole life to you. I'll do whatever you want. They survive the storm. A few days later, they catch a shark and enjoy some sashimi. On the 27th day adrift, they thought they were being rescued. Unfortunately, they attracted the attention of a Japanese fighter plane, which strafes and damages the raft, but miraculously misses them. After patching up the raft, they stayed afloat for six more days before Mac passed away. And on the 47th day, I got good news and bad news. Japanese sailors find and capture Louis and Phil. 
Now prisoners of war, they are imprisoned on an island. The American airmen are interrogated for information on newer bombers and the northern bomb site. Louis states they flew older models and draws a render of a full call radio. They are dragged out to disrobe and kneel on planks, expecting to be executed. Instead, they are crudely washed and shipped to Japan. Upon arrival, they are split up and sent to different prisoners of war camps. This is Tokyo, right? Must be. I was supposed to race here for the Olympics before they got canceled. Yeah? I always wanted to come to Tokyo. Careful what you wish for, fellow. At Camp Amori, Louis and his fellow prisoners of war are the responsibilities of Japanese Corporal Mutsuhiro Watanabe. Upon his arrival, Louis attracts the corporal's attention and gets beat up for it. From that time on, the corporal is especially hard on Louis, beating him often. Louis is given an opportunity to broadcast a message home saying he is alive after learning the US government classified him as killed in action. As he refuses to broadcast another message full of anti-American propaganda, he is sent back to the camp. This man must be taught respect. All other prisoners will teach him this lesson. Each prisoner will punch this man in his face. But when they refused, Watanabe brings out a fellow beat up prisoner and begins hitting him instead. So Louis tells them it's okay. One by one, they punch him in the face. After two years, Watanabe is promoted to sergeant and leaves the camp, much to Louis's relief. Later, the camp is damaged when Tokyo was bombed. So Louis and the others are moved to a different camp and here, Watanabe is again in command. One day, Louis takes a pause during work and is punished by Watanabe who makes him lift a large wooden beam and is told to hold it over his head. He orders the guard to shoot him if he drops it. After a while, despite his exhaustion, Louis defiantly holds up the beam and screams. This enrages Watanabe as Louis stares him straight in the eye. Furious about not being able to break him, Watanabe beats him severely, and Louis is left out there for the night. On August 20th, 1945, they are all gathered for an announcement. They are told that the war has come to a point of cessation, and in the spirit of a new future, they are invited to bathe in the river, which they took to mean their execution. But as they await their fate, a plane flies by. It's over! The war's over! At last, the war is over, and they are free! Louis tries to find Watanabe in his quarters, but sees he has already fled. He sits down, staring at a picture of Watanabe as a child alongside his father. Later, he is returned home to America, where he kisses the ground on arriving home and is embraced by his family. The end scene transitions to the real-life photo of Louis and his family. What an incredible story that shows us the true meaning of overcoming adversities and the resilience of human beings, the determination the drive, the spirit of Zapparini continues to inspire people from all over the world. So what happened after the war? Well, Louis returned to America as a war hero. He met and married Cynthia Applewhite 10 days after meeting her, and they had two children. Phil, his companion on the raft, survived as well and married. Mutsuhiro, the bird Watanabe, went into hiding and evaded prosecution despite being on the top 40 most wanted Japanese war criminal list by General Douglas MacArthur. Louis lived out his promise to convert to Christianity, to devote his life to God, and to forgive his wartime captors, meeting with many of them. Many years later, however, Watanabe still refused to meet with Louis. 
But it all came together when Louis had an opportunity to relive his time as an Olympian when he ran a leg of the Olympic torch relay for the 1998 Winter Olympics in Nagano, Japan at the age of 81. Louis Zapparini died on July 2, 2014 at the age of 97. What a legend. Well, hope you've learned something useful in this episode of Cinefall. You can find more on the Fun Day website. Let's make every day a fun day. If I can take it, I can make it. Precisely. My brother Pete used to say that. He used to think that I could do anything. He used to think that I was better than I am. Who says you're not?